Postmaster General Aaron Brown had a problem. You see, he was the Postmaster General, but he had no way to get the post from coast to coast. So he went to Congress. In 1857, on March 3rd, he got the approval that he needed. He was allowed to give a $600,000 contract to the man who could build a trail that would span from the Mississippi River to the West Coast. That man was John Butterfield. John Butterfield's contract stated the following. He must be able to get mail from St. Louis, Missouri to San Francisco, California in 25 days or less. Aaron Brown gave him one year to get everything ready to go. Now, John Butterfield was an influential man. He was well known and well liked throughout all of America. He hired lots of experienced frontiersmen to help him build his trail. John Butterfield had proposed a unique route to get from St. Louis to California. All of the other contractors had planned to take their trail through Denver, Colorado, and use lots of existing roads. Butterfield proposed instead that they go through Arkansas and Texas. Congress and Aaron Brown both liked this idea. If the trail had gone through Denver, there would be a likely chance of the weather making it impossible to transport mail. So Butterfield started building. The Butterfield Overland Trail was going to have two starting points in the east. One would be in St. Louis, and the other one would be in Memphis. In St. Louis, it would run west until it reached Tipton, Missouri. It would then run south through Springfield and Fayetteville until reaching Fort Smith, where it would meet up with the section of the trail that ran from Memphis, Tennessee, straight west. From Fort Smith, Arkansas, it ran southwest through Oklahoma and Texas until reaching just north of where San Angelo is today. It then started to run in a more westerly direction. When it reached the station entitled Horsehead Crossing, the trail split again. The Spur Trail ran south so that it could run by Forts Davis and Quitman. After it ran through Fort Quitman, the Spur Trail headed back to the rest of the trail in a northwest direction till they met up again in El Paso. From El Paso, the trail ran north until it reached just north of the New Mexico border. It then ran west towards Tucson and San Diego. The trail then ran north to Los Angeles and the trail's final destination, San Francisco. In the end, the trail looked like this. Along the trail, Butterfield constructed stations where the crews could swap out horses and drivers. Next to some of the stations, there was also an inn where the passengers could grab a hot meal. The fee to ride on the Butterfield Trail was $200. Passengers had the option to stop and stay a few nights at an inn and catch the next coach. In the year that Aaron Brown had allotted him, Butterfield had the extremely difficult task of building a trail that was approximately 2,800 miles long and could be traveled in 25 days, 25 days or less. His crew built bridges. They moved boulders. They cut down trees. They mapped where the trail would go in desert lands. They built stations. They bought horses and more and more. They bought some mules too. In the end, Butterfield did it. He was able to use some existing roads and for the first part of the journey, a railroad, but his crew carved much of the trail themselves. The first stagecoach to travel the route left Tipton, Missouri on September 16th, 1857. That same day, the first passengers of the route had traveled from St. Louis on a train. These passengers were John Butterfield himself and a man by the name of Waterman L. Ormsby. Waterman L. Ormsby was the only person to purchase a ticket for the first running of the trail. He was a writer for the New York Herald, and seeing as though he was a writer, he wrote about the trip. When the procession reached Springfield, Missouri, they were met with a salute of firing guns. The passengers stopped and quickly changed to another coach, and they were off again. When the procession reached Fayetteville, Arkansas, they swapped from horses to mules. The route from Fayetteville to Fort Smith was a rugged part of the trip, requiring the sure footing of a mule. Butterfield had taken a liking to Fayetteville and had placed his son, Charles, in charge of operations in the town. His son built an inn and did great business in the town of Fayetteville. The procession rolled into San Francisco 25 days later. John Butterfield had done it.
In 1860, John Butterfield was forced out of the company by Wells Fargo because his debts were so high. Wells Fargo then took over the running of the trail. The trail didn't operate during the Civil War from 1861 to 1865. When the Civil War ended, the trail began to be used again until 1869 when the first transcontinental railroad was completed. As America's first transcontinental postal service, the Butterfield Overland Trail was a true wonder. At the height of its success, the Butterfield Overland Trail hired over 800 people. Butterfield lived up to what he told his workers. Remember boys, nothing on God's earth must stop the mail.